Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the first module, Information Systems Management and the Global Economy. Uh, in this module, we're basically going to focus on how information systems uh, is impacted and how it changes organizations uh, and some of the issues that are facing uh, the economy. And it's this is really going to be kind of like the introduction, obviously, for everything that we do in the course. And we'll go into more detail on some of the topics, but these are the key concepts that we're going to want to know as CIOs or as managers in NIS. So throughout history, in the short history, you can consider it a 30 or 50 year time frame of information technology. And the discipline isn't as mature as, say, marketing or economics or even finance or any of those other ones. Uh, IT management has had a lot of different names. It's had the name of data processing, it's had management information systems, information technology, information systems. Uh, they all basically mean the same thing. Uh, what happens is, is that the importance of the organization uh, dictates what name or what brand it should have. In some organizations, you may have had application development and infrastructure. In other times, it was just, like I said, data processing or business computer information systems. Right now, most of the time, there's going to be the word information in a lot of organizations because that's the critical driver for what IT is really doing. Um, and basically, the name has changed with regards to its role and its importance in the organization. It originally had reported to the finance department. In the 1960s, you basically had systems that were designed for budgets and spreadsheets or the spreadsheeting type applications, calculations, or reporting. Uh, in the 70s, you saw the emergence of some healthcare systems, but those systems even weren't clinical in nature. Those systems were more designed for billing and claims adjudication. Uh, the reporting structure has changed as IT has needed a role at the table and you see it gaining importance where the CIO has the same seat as the chief marketing officer or the chief financial officer and in some cases the CIO is the second or third most important person in the organization. So some of the activities, well IT is not just programming. Uh, IT is beyond programming. It's going to be, we're going to learn about systems integration, we're going to learn about creating value which is really the key concept. IT must focus on value. And how do we obtain value? We obtain value by delivering systems, whether we build them or not is irrelevant. It is acquiring the right things, uh, making sure they're in the right place, and they do what the business needs them to do. Whether that's that we build them, or whether it's uh, that we acquire them or use open source, or buy them from IBM or some other vendor, doesn't matter. It has to support the business. We also see that IT management has to govern the technology that's put in. If everyone went out and got their own system, you'd have a bunch of disparate systems that could never talk to each other. So we need to make sure that they fit within an infrastructure, that if we're going to use a certain database, that we understand that it runs on the servers that have been purchased. This is where we get economies of scale. We have to make sure that it's using technology that can be maintained so that you're not reliant on vendors all the time. The other thing that you have to do is focus on systems integration. Companies rarely work in a silo where they can do everything themselves. Uh, if you have a multi-departmental organization where uh, you have subsidiaries across the country, uh, those systems may need to integrate. They may not use the same exact system. As mergers and acquisitions become even more important, you will see companies focus on how do we merge retail systems? How do we merge the data that comes out of those systems? Even if we keep the systems independent, we want to make sure that we can get the data that's necessary. Uh, the other key factor is outsourcing. Do we outsource or do we insource? Um, there's another term called near, near source or offshoring, nearshoring, onshoring. Uh, do we basically want another company holding on to our IT value, whatever it is? And we're going to learn that the way to outsource properly is through understanding what is and isn't a commodity within the organization. Uh, things that are commodities can be given to anybody and do not give us a competitive advantage. So we don't want to give away something that gives us a competitive advantage, such as an algorithm or a system that none of our competitors have. We also have to make sure that we have business continuity, that if there's a disaster that occurs, we recently had Hurricane Sandy, we've, had, uh, we've seen earthquakes, tsunamis across uh, the globe that impact things like power, network lines. Well, what is our plan to make sure that the business can continue to operate efficiently? And how do we recover from a disaster? It could be as simple as a fire or even a fire within a floor in which our data center is housed, if we own the data center. How do we manage that effectively? What are the plans put in place? And those are what uh, IT uh, is responsible for. We also have to identify trends, so things like social media, mobile technology. How are these things going to impact uh, what we do? 
Uh, you'll see later on there's a video by Ron Johnson of the, the chief executive officer of JCPenney who's basically changing the nature of JCPenney based on what technology such as RFID can actually do. So in terms of driving value, I'm uh, pretty sure you may have seen this in some of your other classes, but this is the value chain. Uh, pretty much what we have are IT can impact the core value, which are the items on the bottom uh, down here. Um, and the ancillary items are the infrastructure, human resource management, technology development, procurement. And these are management activities that basically help each one of these core activities uh, occur. So we want to make sure that we have the right, that we can procure the right marketing and sales application or the right service application, uh, that we have the right HRIS application, and that it sits on a core infrastructure that is utilized by everyone. So delivering value requires that we align the technology and the business strategy. If, a, if an individual unit, business unit, is looking to uh, drive its organization in a certain direction, well, we need to make sure that we have the technology to fit that. So it helps us improve our value chain overall, which is what we ultimately want. So every area of an organization is impacted by IT, some more than others, and it depends on the organization. But very few organizations will have a department that is not impacted by IT. So, quick history of technology. Basically, the most significant event for technology was World War II. We see the advent of algorithms that are built for decoding, uh, even algorithms that are uh, built in these large computers for logistics, and you see that uh, occurring through the late 40s and early 50s uh, as all the items come up. IT was first used by businesses, uh, in business by banks, and banks were the first, the, the primary forerunner beyond some science organizations, uh, people who were doing uh, scientific algorithms, but that's not really what we're focused on from a business perspective. What we wanted to know was who used it first in a business context? And banks were the first one. Bank of America was one of the first systems, actually, uh, was one of the first organizations that implemented a system. IBM was a very critical player, along with Texas Instruments, DEC, and Xerox. Some of these names uh, you may or may not recognize. Uh, during the 1980s, we find the proliferation of PCs as being very important. The PC allowed individual employees to actually be more productive and do different things that they couldn't do before. As we get into the 90s, we find the inter-networking uh, of uh, computers allowing us to communicate with other members within our private network, which would be, say, an organization, or beyond that organization to another company. In 94, we have the key uh, event of the browser, Netscape, uh, which enhanced the usage of the Internet. It's basically a killer app uh, for the Internet. Email was the first killer app we used in the Internet, and then the browser comes along and basically really blows everything away because now we can get information on any company at any time and things even so small as when is a company open? Uh, what products are they selling? Right now, we take a lot of this for granted. Well, during the late 90s, this is what began to drive uh, a lot of the Internet activity, and it reduced barriers to entry. We were able to see people opening up candle stores and, and, and pet stores out of their garage because they no longer needed a storefront. They had a virtual storefront in a website. Right now we see mobile communications and social media as being critical technologies that companies have to understand what is actually happening. You have about 900 million, almost a billion users on Facebook. Well, what do you do with those users? How do you attract those users? And what does it mean to be in their network? In the case of Twitter, you find that companies are actually engaging uh, Twitter followers to see if someone is saying something that uh, is derogatory against the company, they immediately tweet them and say, hey, how can we help you? And then they hope that you're going to tweet a positive thing to your 1,000, 2,000, or 10,000 followers.